Now, let's go ahead and uh, run our first classifier in Worker. To do this, uh, we're going to choose a data set that is best suited for our classification problem. So click Open. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose the Iris data set, uh, load that in Worker. Uh, we can see that this data set has three distinct classes, right? And from the visualization here, we can see they are well balanced. So this would be a good candidate for uh, using accuracy as an evaluation measure. Uh, another thing here is that um, there are two types of classification um, problems. So in this case, this is what we call a multi-class uh, problem where we want to predict uh, one class um, outcome. We want to predict an outcome out of more than two uh, distinct uh, class labels, right? Uh, where we have two only two labels, categorical uh, uh, variables, then we call that a binary uh, classification. All right, the next thing we want to do here is to click on the classify tab. And you can see here on the classifier panel, uh, by default, we have zero, zero R. So zero R here essentially is just one of the simplest uh, classification method. Uh, most times we use this for uh, uh, as a baseline to determine uh, performance uh, with other classification method. Okay, uh, and you can see here, um, it predicts the majority uh, category, okay? So another thing you notice is that uh, we have the test option here. Uh, by default, it's selected as cross-validation, 10 false. So what that means is that um, the data set here, uh, so this data set that has uh, 150 instances uh, will be split uh, into 10 faults, right? Then what that means, nine parts will be used for training the algorithm. Then the 10th part or 10th uh, portion of this data set will be used to assess the algorithm. Now, this will be iterated uh, 10 times until each of these uh, 10 parts have an equal chance uh, to be trained on the algorithm, okay? Uh, of course, there are more options here of what we should see in the outcome, so we'll just leave it as that. Uh, so this, these are our additional options, so we'll just leave it as that for now. So let's click on Start, and right on, we can see that uh, using 0R, a correct out of 150 instances, we were able to correctly uh, identify only 50. You know, this is not very good, 33%. Um, okay, so this is just a very boring uh, uh, classifier. So let's go ahead and, and choose a very uh, popular uh, classifier. Uh, this is called the J48. Uh, if you click here, you can see uh, this is just a minor extension of the more popular uh, C48. Okay, so click on OK. Uh, the next thing you can do here, so we'll leave everything there, cross validation, 10 false, then click on start. Okay, now, uh, so we can see here out of 150 instances, this does a better job. Um, so we were able to correctly identify 144 instances. So essentially, this is just dividing 144 divided by 155, 150. Uh, you get 96%. Okay. So another observation here from the confusion matrix, we can see that, um, so these are the class labels, okay? So you can see this row here, right? We were able to correctly identify the class, uh, correctly identify iris setosa, which is just a flower species, and wrongly uh, identified this as vasicolor. Uh, on the other hand, we can see that uh, for vasicolor, uh, you know, misclassified uh, three instances, as uh, Iris Virginica. And on the other hand, also we see that uh, two of these instances uh, for Virginica were classified as Iris uh, Vasicolor. Okay. So, um, in conclusion, we can see that um, we can use different classifiers here to see how, um, you know, the performance uh, compared to other classifiers. So, we can actually use this as our baseline. Okay. Um, so accuracy here will be a good candidate, especially where we have uh, a well-balanced uh, data set. So um, probably in our next video, we're going to uh, look at um, how to use other uh, classifiers um, uh, for classification problems.